And so to come to Om Shanti Bhavan, to come to Om Shanti Bhavan Hall and to sit in a, such a big gathering, it's not a question of just clapping in happiness, but I feel very happy and you can see that on the face. It's a matter of great happiness which you can see on the face. To sit in Om Shanti Bhavan means to remain completely close to the land of peace. Just take one step and you're into the in the land of peace. When you're sitting at your own centers, then you have to remember Matuban Shanti one. Even sitting in Gyan Sarovar or Om Shanti or in Shanti one, we're still remembering Matuban Pandapa and Om Shanti Bhavan Hall. Even the people sitting in Gyan Sarovar, they do remember Om Shanti Bhavan. There's no place like Om Shanti Bhavan. The atmosphere that's been created in 20 years in this hall. Of course, the other places are also good, but this is better because it's been used for 20 years, Tapasya. The Diamond Hall has its own atmosphere also, but this is the best. In every corner of Madhuban, the vibrations of our sweet Baba's renunciation and tapasya is everywhere. Today, in the Murli Baba said, those who want to become the true yogis and the true Rajrishis, they should just have renunciation and tapasya. Some people ask what effort they should make, and that is response, don't do anything. But just renounce everything. Renounce everything and you're free from everything. Do tapasya and you receive power. What else do you need to do? As soon as you place your feet here, yesterday Baba said it was our return journey that we're going back home now. Baba said, spin the discus of self-realization. Now Baba doesn't tell us to spin the discus, but instead he says, just be incorporeal and in angelic. Daddy was reading the Murliya 14th, um, the 14th November, when uh, Baba had spoken that Murli. At that time, Daddy was on the plane on the return journey. Uh, she was somewhere in South America, and so she thought that, okay, I want to read that Murli in Madhuban. And so she was reading that Murli here. So the Murli of the 14th and the Murli of the 30th November. Hearing it directly in front of Bab Dada. The other day I was uh, l l hearing, reading the Murli while sitting in the plane. But in every Murli, in every Baba's uh, Murli, every word of Baba's Murli fills us with so much power. The song that was played just now was also just of how Baba's remembrance gives us a logic power. It gives us the power to forget this old world. The, it gives us power to go to Paramdam and to come into the new world. To forget this old world, to go to the land of silence. All you need to do is think you have to now return home. You have to shed your costume and then play your part in the land of happiness. Baba is also giving us the power to attain an elevated status. It's not the power to receive a low status. We have to claim a high status, and for this we need courage. Anything that comes in front of you is not a problem because we are the embodiments of solutions. Those who are embodiments of solutions, they don't even have the word problem in front of them. So when I was hearing of the four things, the faith 
faith in four different subjects. Know that you are a very special soul out of thousands of souls, hundreds of thousands of souls. He signaled and I understood that I belong to you, I have now come to you. The soul just received a signal from God. Baba says, I speak to souls. So some souls are such that they're able to catch God's signals. So that is seeing who's able to catch God's signals in a second. Who is calling me? Who is pulling me? When we were in Bridge Koti, we used to have this beautiful song. We are going towards the uh, Supreme Abode. That is one thing, Lucinda, to sing this song. But someone is pulling us with this string of love. And this is taking us to the land of peace, to our home. Baba used to come into the hall and into the classroom and this song would be playing. We would be sitting in front of Baba. Those days were so lovely and also the days now are also just as lovely in their own way. Baba is playing his part even whilst being avyakt in such a way that he is pulling us with that love. Baba said in one second that one Sakar Murli, Baba said it's only the incorporeal souls who know and the incorporeal supreme soul who knows what, what is the remembrance when it's the remembrance that's binding you with the string of love. Daddy had a few questions this morning. And anything. So Daddy says, well, listen to the response. Don't think that I don't experience anything, but realize that I, an incorporeal soul, am a child of the incorporeal supreme soul. So make the string of God's attraction very strong. I don't know anything of the worldly attractions anymore. They shouldn't be pulling me anymore. But only allow yourself to be pulled by God's attraction. Some people have this deep de desire of knowing the things of the old world, uh, to, know the ha to know the happiness of the old world, to attain the happiness of the old world. So if you still have the desire for this, then how can you experience anything of God? Let there be just one desire in your mind, just this one deep concern. I know and he knows. Others will know by themselves and it doesn't matter when, but now I just have to know God and nothing else. One of the Sakar Murli songs is saying that the eyes do not recognize, but the heart recognizes. It's not possible to know God through, your, through the physical eyes. It's not possible to know Him with the intellect either, but you recognize Him with the heart. But just connect your love with Him. Just remain absorbed in His love and see what deep, real deep love is then you don't need to look at your own self, but everyone else will look at you of how you are lost in love. To be lost in love, to be completely absorbed in love. Just look at Mama and Baba. Both of them are standing in front of us now, and you can see how they are totally absorbed in love. They're both standing. It's not that they're just sitting doing tapasya, but both standing in that alert pose. Brahma Baba in the front is sitting, on the side is standing, but they're also moving along, 
moving along in that state of tapasya. They're so unique. It's not that they're sitting in a very serious pose whilst doing tapasya, but you can also see that smile on their face. They're also so lovely. They listen to everything that we say to them, but they don't say a lot. They don't speak a lot. The only response Baba gives is, well, whatever you heard in the Murli, just understand that. Someone asked, well, how can I stop thinking too much? Is it possible for a child to say, I don't have the experience of my mother? Actually, recently when Daddy was there, she had met, met a scientist and he was saying that as soon as a child is born, he's aware of his mother. He recognizes the mother. He recognizes the mother as soon as he's born. The love, the affection, the drishti that we receive from the mother, that is the life for the child. If the child doesn't receive thirst, then it's like they haven't received anything. In Western countries, you find many ex examples of people who, even though they have become old, they would say, well, I didn't have the experience of my mother's love. Because the power that you receive through the mother's love is useful to you throughout your life because the love that the mother gives is true love, it's real love. doesn't matter what the child is like or what the mother is, whether it's the child of a king, whether it's a child of a queen or whether it's a child of a poor person, yet the mother would have love for the children. And you find that it's the children of the poor ones who are much more happier having giving so much love to the children. But the wealthy children, you'll find that they don't have that much experience because the parents would hand over the children to the maids and servants. They themselves would be busy touring around and traveling around everywhere. But the poor ones would feel happy having their children close with them. So realize that I'm a child of God. I, the soul, am a child of God. And as soon as you think this, there is that deep happiness. Then as you grow older, the mind, the physical senses, they all begin to experience happiness. You realize that you're a child of good, and so you realize what your mind, your physical senses should be like. You experience super senses joy and you begin to swing. When the child is young, then it's not, when the baby is still very young, then it's not put in the cradle. Initially, the child is just put to sleep in the, in the mother's lap. But as the child grows a little bit older, then the mother puts him in the cradle and it's in the cradle that the baby continues to dance in happiness. The cradle like a swing and so, those who have uh, those who have made their mind and physical senses very pure, cool, calm with the experience of the mother's love, not by suppressing but through the mother's love, they are able to experience super senses joy. A child would not say, my mind is peaceless. A child would cry sometimes, yes, but why does it cry? Why does the baby cry? Two-month-old baby, but sometimes the baby cries. Sometimes it's smiling, sometimes it's crying. But we understand that the baby is laughing or crying because of the karmic accounts of the past birth. He may have become anyone's child at in the present time in this birth, but suddenly he starts crying. Or sometimes suddenly he'll start laughing. It's the memories of the past karma that he remembers. Because the baby is still very young, 
He's just left one family, has received a lot of love there, but he's left that family and come to this family, and here also he's received a lot of love. But as the child grows up and becomes sensible and performs to, uh, begins to perform good actions by himself, he begins to learn to play, begins to learn to eat by himself. Initially, it's the mother who feeds the child because the baby is not able to eat by himself. But then he develops the sense of what to eat, how to eat, and what to eat. The mother teaches the child what to eat. Some children are such that they're not able to accept non-vegetarian food from the time that the mother starts eating, feeding them with that. It's like the child reacts because of the sanskars of the past birth, because the child's not able to take that anymore. So first of all, being a child of Ba, ba and then as you as you grow older in Gyan, you realize that it's the scars of the past that make you either laugh or cry. Remembering the things of the past, you sometimes laugh, you sometimes cry. But imagine a child of God. Just sings praise of the Father, praise of the time, praise of fortune. The feeling is, Baba, I now belong to you. Whether you were rich or poor, it doesn't matter, but you've forgotten the state of that, but you just belong to the Father. You find that you happy that you found a Father. As soon as I came to Baba, as soon as anyone comes to Baba, they cannot say, well, I'm wealthy, or they cannot say, I am poor, I haven't brought anything to Baba. For Baba, everyone is equal. <coughs> Baba would say, the child, even barefoot, you've still come to the Father, no? You came quickly, and so that's good. But um, the wealthy ones, they would take time in coming. They would constantly be questioning, should I come, should I not come, should I come, should I not come? But the poor ones, they would come barefoot, and they would come quickly. They might not have brought anything except their heart, and that's all that's needed. But those who able to sit with Baba according to their own power, their own capacity, settle their karmic accounts, become free, free from the punishment of Dharam Raj by asking for forgiveness from the Father and learning and studying with the, fa with the teacher. If you accept yourself as a, as a child of the Father, He will teach you very good actions. Realize that the Father is also going to be Dharmraj. So when we speak of Dharmraj, the Supreme Judge, then we know that God the Father is first of all the Mother, and that's why He accepts us as we are. Whatever you are, however you are, you are Mine. First we say you're the mother, then we say you're the father. When we say the father, then we say you're also the teacher. The mother would not say that he's the teacher. The mother would not say that you're a sinner or anything, but the mother would just accept, okay, you've come, and so just sit here. sit in his lap, and there's great safety in that. No matter how dirty you've become, but the mother would clean the child with a lot of love. No matter how sinful a soul is, but Baba makes that soul very pure. Someone said, I still feel guilty. Baba says, stop feeling guilty about anything. If you've done anything wrong, that's fine. It's gone in the past. It's Ravan who made you do that. 
You did that out of body consciousness. Ravan made you do that. So now forget all of that. Baba's told us the reasons why we felt guilty. When you have a little bit of understanding of what you have done, Baba, I've committed so much sin, I didn't do anything right. Then Baba would say, OK, child, you became separated from me. You became body conscious. Ravan made you do wrong things. You received such company. The study you had was like that. The atmosphere of the world also influenced you. But now you've become my child, so stay as my child. But study with love. The study is such from the moment that I came to Baba and as the mother I know him because I've gone into his lap he's adopted me but then when I come to the the mother gives her with the child to the father and the father says become worthy today Baba said well become even more elevated than I am I am worshipped in one way only and you are worshipped in two ways the father has great hopes in his children he also keeps a stern eye on them. Then the father um, becomes a teacher and says, study well. In the Sakar days, Baba would complain, saying that the children are not studying very well. And the father would um, complain to the mother, saying, what are you doing all throughout the day? The children are not studying so well. It's like it's the mother's fault that the children are not studying. Then as the Shatguru, his giving us Srimad not to use the dictates of our own mind. Don't allow yourself to be influenced. Dictates of others are full of um, subservience, suppression. Just think about it. Why is it that you're not able to experience I belong to Baba and Baba belongs to me? What is Srimat? Srimat of the Father and the teacher gives very clear understanding of everything. Today, Baba said, doesn't matter what anyone is like, crippled, blind, handicapped, whatever, but even such a soul can study and teach others. The one who's teaching us is such an expert that no matter what physical disabilities there are, you can still study this. In the early days, Baba would say that the three generations are studying together, the grandmother, the mother, and the daughter, all three together. The grandfather, the father, and the children, they're studying together. But then Baba checks which one is the cleverest of all. But then Baba says, well, each one is making their own individual effort. All three are studying in the same class at the same time, and yet their attention in the study is number-wise. Some people think, well, I don't want to just pass, but I want to pass with honors. Some people say, well, stu the study helps me a great deal. Okay, it's helping you, but then what? What are you going to do after the study? Some people say, well, even if I've studied just a little, even that little has been useful. And so it's like they don't want to study more than that. Baba says, if you study, if you study well, you'll become the masters, but if you don't study, you'll end up crying. So if your intellect is wandering around everywhere, everywhere, how would you be able to study? So realize that your intellect should not be wandering around when you're studying, and this is why we have to observe purity. It's only in celibacy that people are able to study well. Otherwise, in your study, you get distracted about with your boyfriends and girlfriends, then you can't study. You'd be sitting in class, and yet your intellect would be wandering. Baba says, 
instead of spoiling the atmosphere, just go. Here only God can become your friend. You can make him your companion, but if you're going to remember your boyfriends and girlfriends, then leave this place. You can go outside and remember your, even if you want to make someone else your guru, then you can go outside and do that, but not sit in this gathering. If you want to fulfill your desires, then go to the temple. But here, you have to study and make that effort. You have to remember the Father with an honest heart. The sanskars are filled with the sinful actions of the past. We perform actions through the, through the body, with our relationships, with our relations. The body is connected with wealth, relations, the atmosphere of the world, and so the vices, the five vices take um, and give good company to the body in this, in performing wrong actions, in wealth, in relationships, in according to the atmosphere of the world. But whatever actions you perform, that becomes your sanskar. This is why you'll find that in almost every murli, Baba, you'll find that Baba says, child, it's only through remembrance that your sins will be absolved. Whatever sins you have performed, they will be destroyed. But let them be destroyed in such a way that not even a trace of it remains. Because even the slightest trace will then create a whole progeny. Things that are created from rubbish, you'll find that it's only a tiny little bit of rubbish and then you'll find it grows so quickly. Insects, mosquitoes, ants, all of these things, these are the creation of dirt and rubbish. And they grow so quickly, they expand so quickly, they cause so much distress. They spoil everything wherever they happen to be. What does the mouse do? The mouse wouldn't realize that this is something very valuable, I shouldn't spoil it, but the mouse would put its mouth in that, it would bite that, and then it would spoil everything. So in the same way, human intellect has also become like that of a mouse, and they don't realize what they're doing. Baba would smile and laugh at someone and think, say that this one's intellect is like that of a mouse. In front of Ganesh, Ganpati, they show the mouse. So, and ha from having such an intellect, he became a child of God, and so that's why he's worshipped. Hanuman, shown as a monkey, but then he's the one who's remembered as the Mahavir, is because he's let go of the monkeyish character, monkeyish nature, and his intellect became very wise. Ganesha, the one with the very wise intellect. It's because you have the understanding of what you now have to do. I, the soul, and second is my father, the supreme soul, and third are my actions. <laughs> People have got too much distracted in um, all the other kinds of courses like the positive thinking, self-management, leadership, and all of those things, and so everywhere that that has been going. She's been telling people not to get so caught up in the courses, but just remember the karma philosophy. Oh soul, look at your face in the mirror of your heart. How much sin, how much charity have you accumulated? Now accumulate in the account of charity <coughs> and finish the burden of sin. Today the soul is a star of hope, tomorrow it's a star of success, and it, uh, then afterwards it becomes a sparkling star. 
Understand yourself as a soul and you develop hope in yourself. Yes, Baba also has hope in me because Baba says it's the child of the previous Kalpa who's come here. Then you have courage, you make effort, you see success, and then you feel that determination. Well, this is all I have to do. I don't want to do anything else because you experience that happiness and success. Baba says success is your birthright. Those who didn't know anything, they began to understand how to perform good actions. Bad actions had made their intellect completely corrupt. But good actions makes the intellect very elevated. In today's Murli also, Baba said, Performing good actions makes your intellect elevated and bad actions makes your intellect corrupt. Corrupts your intellect. The two was elevated and corrupt and yet there's so much difference between the two states. For a short time, just look at your own self. Don't look at anyone else. When your intellect is corrupt, what's the condition of the soul inside? The mind, the conscience is biting. You're remembering the sins of the past. Previously, you didn't remember them, but when the intellect has become so low, it's then that you remember them. As was the world, so was your vision. And you didn't realize that something wrong that you were doing was actually a sin. This is why today Baba said, people think that, well, all of this continues in the world all the time, that sin and charity has continued all the time. In this way, they have been cheating themselves. They hadn't understood that there is something. They hadn't understood that with the company of the Purifier Father, they had to become pure. They continued to turn the beads of the rosary, but never ever thought that they could become a bead of the rosary. It's so wonderful that God sat and taught us little children and made us so clever. So now become a bead of the rosary. Turn the beads of the rosary. Uh, earlier, you would be turning the beads of the rosary and the intellect would still be wandering. But now you've stopped your intellect from wandering and you become a garland around the neck. You stopped wandering, the intellect became elevated, your actions became elevated, and then that same soul you find has become a very beautiful bead of the rosary loved by God and is close to the almighty authority. It never becomes confused, never wilts, never, con never, wilts, never becomes confused, never becomes afraid. Where do you get the power from? Well, Baba is giving that power. Through the study you've understood, you've developed great understanding. And when you revise the study, that's what a good student does, revises everything, doesn't waste his time in eating and drinking. But Baba used to explain to us, and we've also seen it with our eyes, Baba would give up his, renounce his sleep and then study at that time. In the early days when we were in Karachi, then the lights <laughs> we used to be very economical in everything and be very concerned about how much light we used to use. The lights would be turned out quite early. So I used to go and sit outside in the moonlight and study there. It wasn't like nowadays where you use so much light everywhere. But that time I would sit under the moonlight, I would sit and write something, I would study, I would have yoga, because I would think that it's me that has to study. So those who have love for study, that the one who's teaching would have a lot of hopes in the one who has attention on study. They would say, this one's definitely going to pass. Those who are interested in study would not be concerned about um, anyone else, any kind of gossip or with anyone else. They wouldn't be thinking of anyone else either. They wouldn't be defaming anyone. In fact, this is something that's very dangerous, causes a lot of loss. 
Someone says, I never tell lies. Someone says, I never steal. Some says, I never even steal and I never cheat anyone. But even if you've uh, defamed anyone or, you're, or you've heard of defamation of others, then that's also very bad because this then creates a habit of wanting to listen to defamation. Even causing defamation is a habit. So the habit of listening to or causing defamation is very bad. If I were to ask, I won't ask it now, but each one of you can ask yourself, to what percentage do you still have the habit of listening to or causing defamation? Check this within yourself, even the slightest bit of defamation of others, to try to prove yourself to be right, to try to prove others to be lower than yourself. This is also such a bad habit. Baba said, become such a yogi that you're able to hit the arrow, strike the target. It's easy to become a teacher and teach, but to become a yogi, that's something that requires some hard work. To be a Rajarishi, to be engaged in activity, and yet to be in that state of tapasya, because the nature of a rishi is very simple, sweet, doesn't speak a lot, concerned with just himself. The kingdom is continuing, everything is working along fine in the kingdom, and yet he is in his avyakt stage. Even just looking at Baba, you see Baba and the arrow hits the heart. It's like, this is what I want to become like. No one will tell them that you have to become like that, but just seeing Baba, they feel, I want to become like this also. To have love for the Father, to have deep love for the Father, because you receive an inheritance from the Father. The mother doesn't give you an inheritance, it's the Father who gives that. But the father will not give you the inheritance just like that for nothing. Nowadays, even the unworthy children will say, well, I have a right to the inheritance. But here the father will say, first of all, become worthy, and then you can have as much of the inheritance as you want. There are so many children, all are the unlimited children of unlimited Baba, and so you can all claim the unlimited inheritance. Baba doesn't have to distribute the inheritance according to shares or anything. But each one can claim as much as they want. Each one individually should sit on the immortal throne in the center of the forehead. There's no need to compete in this. You all have your own individual places, your own individual thrones. And so each of you to sit on that throne. If you sit in anyone else's throne, then that will be like the interference of the evil spirits. But you have to sit in your own throne. Otherwise, there will be confusion if you try to sit in someone else's throne. So recognize your own self. I'm the original eternal child of God. Eternally the child of God and originally the child of Adi Brahman, Brahma. And I have this understanding. This is why I'm able to s become a Brahman. So now I have to make effort to sit on the Father's heart. It's the heart throne of the Father which will enable me to claim the throne of the kingdom. In order to be seated on the Father's heart throne, I first need to sit on the immortal throne. But if there isn't the soul conscious stage, if you haven't finished body consciousness, then how can you sit on the Father's throne? Someone asked Daddy, well, what is this mud? The mud, the, the mud of body consciousness that Baba spoke of. Well, nowadays you don't ha see that, but in the early days, a car would get stuck in the mud to such an extent that it would need to be pushed to get it out of that. It's like 
So body consciousness is also such that it takes a lot of effort to remove the soul from that. You remove the car out of the mud, but then you also need to push it to make it move forward. And so in the same way, the mud of body consciousness, your foot would slip and you would become a poor, helpless person. And so realize, why did you fall down? Because you're, you, were, when you were a little bit dizzy. But why were you dizzy? Because there was tension or pressure of something or the other. So let there not be any kind of tension. Let there be no pressure of anything. Sometimes there's also the effect of sorrow. Then you feel, I can't understand what I should do. I don't know how I felt, but it's then difficult to come out of that. But then Baba is being merciful and says, okay, never mind, and he removes us from there. Baba had mercy and removed us from that. And then you say, well, what can I do now? I am like this, I am like this. You don't think you're very disheartened with your own self. And then you have to create hope in those that, yes, we're helping you. It's possible for you to move along. It's possible for you to go forward. But you at least need to have that courage first. So a sensible, honest child is one who who has a lot of love and regard for the father, teacher, and Sadhguru. You have the experience of the father's love. And then the teacher is one who teaches everyone the same, but yet he has special attention on those who study well. If you're studying with attention, then everyone's attention would be drawn to you. Baba's attention would also be drawn to you. The class members would also know, and their attention would be drawn on you that this child was studying well, and they'd, say, they'd be aware of which number you would claim. You're all class students, and so there are many others who are studying with you, but you can tell from how much each one is studying with which number you would pass. I wouldn't like it if I was making number-wise effort because I have to make number one effort to become number one. Why should I make number-wise effort? Why should Baba give me number-wise love and remembrances? How would I feel if I was to receive that? Sometimes Baba says in the Murali, not every time, but sometimes he says, love, remembrances, and good morning, number-wise, according to the effort you're making. Baba's desire is that we all become number one, but then what can we do? Those who have love for the Satguru, then they realize that it's very good for them to follow Srimat. Then that makes them free from the influence of the dictates of others, subservience to others, any kind of pressure from others. So now realize that Srimat is very beneficial, benevolent. Just make your intellect pure, calm and then elevated and also determined to have that determination. For such a person, Dharamraj is always in front of him. So first you have to be aware of Dharamraj, then the father, teacher and Satguru. Throughout my whole life, I always remember that my father is Dharamraj. Just imagine what would be the condition of if a magistrate were to call his child in the court and say, child, you did this thing wrong, and so this is your punishment. And the people outside who are not so much aware of sin and charity, they wouldn't experience that much. 
the original religion is that of peace, but then in our activity there is that truth and honesty. Inside there's just total peace. Together with peacelessness, all the sorrow has gone, and when we develop peace, then happiness also comes. When you stay in your original religion of peace, you experience happiness and peacelessness, then the peace then also made the sorrow go away. In talking about honesty, there are three things. One is honesty, one is uh, truthfulness, and the third is faithful. In relationships, in relationships, in relationships there is total faithfulness. When there is that honesty, then there is no selfish motives. And then in our exchange with one another, interaction with one another, total honesty so that there isn't an, um, any fluctuation of even one penny. So the children of Dharamraj pay attention to this. The careless ones would say, well, what does this matter anyway? Sometimes someone gives them a signal and then say, they say, well, no one has any faith in me. Those who are moving along very well would never say that so-and-so doesn't have faith in me. But seeing that one, others have to automatically have faith in them. He is a scientist, but I am the one who's got the power of silence, and we're both having a dialogue together. He is very expert in uh, thinking and speaking, and I am an expert in just remaining. I don't know anything else except just to remain in silence. And he had three questions. One, one was the thing about the children that he was talking about. It's, Human nature of a child is that he wants the love of a mother. Human nature is such. Someone's nature is one of giving. He was he's done a lot of research on nature, and so he was trying to prove nature of how some people's nature is very sweet. He wasn't just doing research on the elements' nature, but also the nature of human beings. He said, nature of children should be such that they shouldn't have to be told, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to do, but they should learn by themselves. So he shared something, then I shared something, then she said something. Then he said, well, there's trust is completely finished in the world. No one has any trust in anyone else. And that his response in one word was, here we ourselves have to become trustworthy. And he just began to look at Dadi. I couldn't say, well, I don't trust anyone. I can't put a stamp on everyone like that. Why don't I have that trust? In the golden and silver ages, there wasn't any question of trust. It's only later in the copper age onwards that they started building, building temples and other things. But it's not the one who built it who would look after it, but generations after them would be looking after it. In the Iron Age, there, aren't, there isn't any trust because there's a lot of dishonesty. So I must make sure there isn't any dishonesty in myself. In relationships, we have that trust. That is, um, when some, when you're brothers and sisters, you don't say that, I don't trust you. So that he was sitting next to him and said, well, you are my brother, and I feel that you really are my brother. And he said, yes. And he said, yes, I'm your sister. 
That is said, I'm your sister. And he said, yes. And we are true brothers and sisters. And so how can I say that there isn't any trust in one another? There's great happiness seeing one another. To have such a brother in the world who's able to research so well and then give that understanding to others so that they're able to create a good life for themselves. Scientists otherwise are very clever in cutting off the spiritual aspects. But he just continued to listen with a lot of love. But the things that Daddy was speaking of, they were things that were really to be accepted. But also the things that he was speaking of were things of to be accepted because he's done a lot of research, but he had a lot of practical examples also. But what was missing in that was whatever was missing, he benefited in that by sitting next to me and understanding the things that I was talking about. So we understood one another, we gave respect to one another. Now people have become bankrupt of giving respect to others. It's the arrogance that doesn't allow you to accept anyone. If I had the arrogance of being such a spiritual leader, or you had the arrogance of being such a great scientist, we wouldn't have been able to sit together here. But we're able to sit here because both of us are free from arrogance. And he said, yes, this is right. I didn't know that. I didn't realize how essential it is to become free from arrogance. He said, do you have any proof of being egoless, of someone being egoless? And that he was saying, well, what of what use? You have the proof of seeing those with ego everywhere in the world. Political leaders, religious leaders, wherever you go, you'll find uh, those with ego. God wants those who are totally without ego, no matter how much work they do. So there is trust in one another, trust in the self and trust in God also. But otherwise, how can those people accept God? We don't say that you're not believing in God, you're an atheist and so. But his respect, his stage, his um, property, if you're able to see that, then you're able to accept. We've got very good um, facilities, the scenes around there. In South America, the place where Daddy was, on the one side was snow-capped mountains, on the other side was volcanic mountains. And so, so seeing that kind of nature, everyone becomes very happy because it's very beautiful nature. So on the one side, seeing the very pure, cool, calm stage, and here we would look inside ourselves to see that intense stage that Baba talks of, uh, the volcanic stage inside, which completely finishes everything else inside. So they're able to make quiet in their mind by seeing those things, scenes of nature, but they don't receive power from that. But here we look at the inner stage in the same level, and we're able to experience power. They're missing the power of soul consciousness. So Baba has given us children that understanding the power of the soul. There should be the power of the soul, original power of the soul. There shouldn't be the slightest bit of love for this mud of body consciousness. You shouldn't be touched by it even in, by a, with a drop of it, because then that's a stain on the self which looks very bad. If your clothes were to be just covered with that mud, you'll immediately want to go and change your clothes. So there is so much understanding that if 
you've made any mistake with the influence of some company then immediately you want to put that right by just going into that state of introversion first just see a lotus flower how it's so detached from everything so I also should develop that habit of being totally detached so when I develop the habit of being detached once I instill the habit of being detached then God begins to give me love and I receive power he's giving me love but I don't become detached and so I don't experience it God doesn't turn off the tap in um, just letting the love for flow even if the urn is upside down at least let it be under the tap so then at least it will experience that coolness if you go away from under the tap then you'll probably dry up you'll be um, kicked by something and you'll break so at least not move away from being under the tap so we always pay a lot of attention that people have good company and they're not affected by the atmosphere outside it's only when there is purity and truth around that you experience that coolness without purity the truth cannot work because it's me that has to become pure it's not God who has to become pure he's the one who is ever pure we are the ones who become impure and so we have to become pure but in order to become that God the truth is giving us his power he's giving us his company of truth he's giving us the true knowledge the company of truth the true knowledge and in order for us to follow the path of truth he is guiding us at every step it's I who have to walk that path he is holding my hand but yet I have to walk I have to take the steps Baba says you take courage you have courage and I will help you but first you need to help have courage but in order to have courage you need to have an honest heart then you'll become free from the punishment of Dharamraj your karmic accounts will be settled and you'll become master Dharamraj and then no one will be able to do anything wrong in front of you Twenty years ago, just before Didi became a Vyakt, um, Daddy was reminding this yesterday, the, the double foreigners, and she's saying that I don't um, carry around a bunch of keys like the old people do. They always keep the pa um, bunch of keys with themselves. But I don't don't know how to keep a bunch of keys with myself. I've never held on to a bunch like that. But then I also don't let go of the key. Um, Baba had once um, explained what children do when they have to look after something. So no one has the courage to actually take away the key from me because I'm Master Dharamraj. This is God's task. This is a sacrificial fire where I mustn't touch even a pencil. If you want something, then just tell Baba. If you want to eat something, then ask for it. Why do you eat it secretly? Sometimes if they like something, then they'll eat it. If they don't like it, they'll say, well, I'm not hungry. I don't want to eat in anything. So what is this? This is also the account of action. Karma philosophy. Something's good, yes, I'll eat it. Something's not so good, I'm not so hungry. This isn't being honest. Then afterwards, Daddy used to catch people like that and she'd say, child, 
Sister, look after your actions. Be careful of what you're doing. You mustn't suppress your physical senses. You mustn't cause distress to them, but you have to become Satoguni and make them Satopradhan. I want to become part of the Rosary of Victory. I want to become worthy to be remembered. I want to help others in their effort. I want to inspire others. So that others feel, yes, this one is a wonder. I've seen their effort. So perform such actions. One of the songs of the world outside is um, God is watching me. And uh, Daddy always used to remember when she heard that song that the world is watching me. Everyone is watching me. In Bhakti, people used to say that God is watching. He is also watching me as a teacher. Are you studying well? You're not nodding off, are you? And so as a teacher also, he's keeping an eye on me. In the form of the Satguru, he is looking at me. I am, am I following Srimad or am I following the dictates of my own mind? He looks at my own whole timetable. How am I when I'm awake? How am I when I'm asleep? I eat with you, I sit with you, I listen to you, I speak to you. What am I doing throughout the day? So Baba's watching all of this. He's watching us very carefully so that we become completely viceless, complete with all virtues. Whilst the soul is in the body, it has to continue to study. Everyone is watching me. This one's now in Gyan 66 years, 30 years, 20 years, 10 years. This one's been in Gyan only one year, and yet she's studying so well. So there is an income in our study. There's so much income being earned through our study. So then we are able to remain healthy, wealthy, and happy. So now we'll have very powerful remembrance for five minutes. Doli will be given outside also. Om Shanti. Did everyone understand? Become free from the punishment of Dharamraj. Become master Dharamraj. Keep the Lord pleased with an honest heart. Have courage and the Father will help.